Uh, it is what it is. Breeder Canning is a personal uh, trainer. Good morning to you, Breeder. Good morning, Greg. How's it going? Good. Thank you very much for joining us. I kind of don't get involved in the conversation that much because it's not often me that's affected by it. But yes. I find it remarkable. Um, uh, maybe this is not exactly what we're talking about. But I find it remarkable that a woman posts a picture of themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. And I saw one in particular where there was a lady who suffers with an issue with her stomach. So sometimes she bloats and sometimes she doesn't. Mm -hmm. right? Um, and she posted a picture of herself in a lovely dress. And on that day, she just happened to be a little bit bloated. And there were hundreds and hundreds of comments commenting on her in a really negative way uh, she shouldn't be wearing that dress is she pregnant is she not yeah. and I'm not saying they weren't sock puppet accounts they seemed legitimate accounts but it was mostly women I was astonished by I that I think yeah body shaming that's the topic that is completely out, <laughs> completely different to what we're ch or you're chatting about all day mm. with the politics going off topic a little bit but yeah body shaming I think social media itself has just highlighted it even more you know I think social media itself it's neither good nor bad mm. I think it brings it's a tool mm. essentially for communicating with people but I think it brings out the bad in people um, and body shaming it's been around for forever like it you know what I mean so but I think whenever someone's behind a screen they can say whatever they like mm. co completely like but I think as me being a coach uh, I've been a coach now for the last seven eight years and I've experienced even firsthand seeing other coaches taking that approach body shaming with their clients and for me usually the coaches that take that that um, that approach usually they have no people skills or no coaching experience essentially yeah i mean wh whatever about the public commenting mm. and, and all that kind of stuff and we can talk a bit more about that yeah. if you you wouldn't expect that from a coach you know i mean i know there's different ways to motivate people but surely yeah. the last way is to do that because if that person says this is not for me they have to live with that commentary in the back of their head for the rest of their lives 100 percent, and i think it's you know sort of studies have even proven that weight stigma can actually trigger psychological and behavioral changes in metabolic health and weight gain. So essentially, if you're fat shaming someone, then their chances are they're going to eat because they're stressed. Mm -hmm. And what do they go to? They eat. So of course, they're going to become even more overweight. Mm. So it doesn't work, essentially. Yeah, and that's the physical response. But the mental response, that, that spiral, that rabbit hole that you, 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 you're it. potentially pushing them into, that's where... You know, the, the, you mean the, the physicality, that's where you can see it, but it's the Completely. mental anguish where... Completely, and I think, you know, it is all to do with psychological. It's all in your, your behavior then, of course, that works the same way. And I think going off the topic of... Um, of coaches, yes, mm. online body shaming, it's so prevalent. But I think that mm. we have to be very, very careful when it comes to social media, I suppose. We just have to be taking it with a pinch of salt. Um, but I think there's a lot of different stressors that come into social media that we need to be very aware of because I think it'll, of course, it'll turn into a full-blown mm. mental health issue if we yeah. don't take it, you know, take it with us. Another thing that re I find remarkable too, going through social media, <clears throat> if a woman happens to post a picture and she has tattoos, it seems instantly this string of men come in, and it's primarily <laughs> men in this case, yes. that want to tell the world that they don't like tattoos on women. Uh, and, and I'm not saying it's the same thing. Yeah. It wouldn't necessarily have a serious impact. Mm -hmm. But it's just this culture of, you know, if you post a picture of yourself publicly, yeah. well, you can expect me to tell you precisely what I think of you. It's That's crazy. it. It's, it's completely it's, it's completely to do with people hiding behind uh their screens mm. and people feeling the need that they're able to say whatever they like behind the screen and I think we all like I said I think the most important thing for people to to realize is that I think you need to curate your own social media feed mm -hmm. um you know for instance um you know see how long you're actually going on your social media for and the easiest way to do that is by going on your phone going into your settings checking how much screen time you actually use on your mm. phone and you'll be very very surprised how much you actually probably use your phone mm -hmm. and um so for instance if you're you know spending two hours a day on social media you have two hours in your 24-hour window and if i'm filling that with negative negative comments negative feed then what is that going to do to my mental health in the long run mm. so essentially just unfollow the people that you know are giving you the negative comments yeah but you, you see know. and i can understand that and that's you taking direct action mm. and curating your own list but mm -hmm. you should never it should never come to that in the first place you know i mean i think really flip it on the other side yeah. if you're on social media two hours a day and you're mm. hopping on posts of other people uh, who are maybe trying to help other people or just trying to express themselves the way they want yeah. and you're posting ne negative comments for 
two hours a day uh, and you're judging people based purely on that picture don't just limit your time on social media get off social media 100 percent. if you're you the know. one behind the screen yeah. doing it mm. like but it's, the thing is i don't think you ever you know i don't think anyone in ireland it's it's very surprising that you actually see people saying these comments and mm. they're maybe local people or people you may know and yeah. it's just it's completely mind-boggling again so on that is. case i was telling you about like you know i found myself like i was reading it, i was going what because i thought yeah. these were because you know what uh, politically mm -hmm. you have a lot of fake accounts right you know mm -hmm. and, and exactly. people, people create these fake accounts yeah. or it's greg 5270 million <laughs> whatever it is right no yeah. no profile picture but on this story i was talking of this lovely lady who posted this picture um the, the, these were real. These were real people. Mums. Uh, real people. Some, most, there were some fellas in there too, but they were mums. Mm -hmm. They were daughters. They were grandparents. Oh, the hundred percent. Saying you shouldn't be wearing that dress. You look pregnant and all this kind of stuff. And I was oh, like, wow, it, that it, woman. It, yeah. If she either is as strong as an ox, or else this is going to destroy her. One of the two. One hundred percent. And I don't know anyone could take that level of criticism, no matter how strong you are. Definitely, but I think if you put yourself out there in the limelight in any way, you need to be ready for the backlash for, oh, yeah. you know, and I know, I, it's I know. unfortunate. I think I that's just yeah. the way we live, and I'm sure you, get, change you get a couple of comments here oh, and there, Greg, you as well. <laughs> would you, you know, Penny yesterday. <laughs> Lots <laughs> of good ones, too, but, you know, funny enough, you can get, like, 20 nice comments, mm -hmm. but it's that one... It's that one that goes, with yeah. its personal, mm -hmm. that that's the one that sort of makes you sort of you know recoil a little bit. I think, and I think it's our Irish behaviour as well. We're very self-critical, mm. and if someone criticises the way we look or the way we behave, I think it does it does stay in our in um, our heads for um, a while. I suppose we're not fantastic at elevating each other either. No, definitely no. not. I, I lived in America for a couple of years and I uh, was personal trainer out there, and even working alongside clients out there you know all they want to do is obviously talk about themselves and mm. their own mental health which i think is personally great do you know we are very closed books when it comes to our own mental health um mm. i think we're getting we're getting there we're getting better on it definitely but a long way i suppose have you any tips for a medium-sized tank medium-sized <laughs> tank <laughs> <laughs> oh, just enjoy your life, Greg. Okay. Ignore, I'd, ignore I'd, the bad I'd, I'd comments. Hal, I'd ignore hal, the hate. I had half a pizza last night, and I'll tell you, I'm well, suffering so you've today. Been, you've been at the elections all day. I'd say that yeah. you'd have to eat something anyway to keep you going. You struggled with 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 your own um, with your own image uh, in the mm -hmm. past as well, and and obviously now you know you've built up uh, built up. I don't know how I don't even say built up the resilience. I don't think that does, yeah. does is, gives it the credit that it deserves. But like. We have to really think about other people. Like body dysmorphia is a condition. It's the same as a broken leg. 100%. It's the same as having your neck in a neck brace. Yeah. You know, but because we can't see it, we don't even presume it could exist. And we just go out and we Definitely. say, we can say whatever we like about anybody. Yeah, uh, th that was one of the reasons why I got, uh, became a personal trainer at the start. Um, I think it was about 17, 18. Um, I just, um, just some people around me. I had my own personal trainer at the time as well. And I looked up to her as a mentor myself. And... I just got uh, overly obsessed with with training, with with eating, with just essentially just my own body. And um, body dysmorphia, if any of you don't know what that is, is essentially if you um, you think that you physically look different than what you yeah. actually look. Basically, you're looking in the mirror, and what you're what seeing you see. in that mirror is not what what exa yeah, what exactly. everyone else sees. So basically. if you want to see someone, if you think right, I've got and, and you're looking. Mm -hmm. And you're seeing things that no one else can see. So you're yeah. seeing your shape being different. You're mm -hmm. seeing all, more, all manner of things. Yes. How do you realize that that's what you're doing? Well, I had I had my family and my friends on me a lot. You know, um, it, it took me a while. Uh, you know, I probably was, I put on a little bit of weight. Maybe I was about size, I was all, never overweight ever. You know, I, was, I think I went up to maybe a size 14, which is not overweight whatsoever. Um, but in my head, I was a size six which is a lot less than a size 14 and i was buying all size six clothes and wow. you can imagine like yeah. and it was just in my head and every time you tried them on it was instant it disappointment and failure well no i still no? thought that i was a size I, okay. that was the right, size okay. that's what yeah. it was in body dysmorphia for my head but you know constant comments from my my friends and my family and eventually you know i just had to it, it dawned on me that it, that it wasn't me mm. but it, it, you know what it takes time and i think um you do have to work a lot on your mental health mm. and you know come to realization that essentially it isn't what it is but i think there's so many people out there that definitely feel the same way 
Yeah, I think everyone so- has issues with their own bodies. Yeah, the social 100%. media influencers, I don't know, they do a great job, but you know, there's a cycle they go, they post themselves and they know the poses and they look fantastic. Completely. And then they, they garner all the likes and from that. And then the next day, they'll stand in front of a mirror and stick the belly out and say, I'm having one of those days, girls. You 100%. know what I'm on? And it's, it's manipulation. Um, and and it's unfortunate. It is part of life, though. We have to we have to curate this ourselves. We yeah. have to f- be ourselves yeah. and realize that what we see online as well, when it looks perfect, it's not it's not really perfect in reality, is it? Definitely not. But we and are perfect. We, but there's because there is no perfect, perfect in our own ways. Exactly. Of That's course, it. we are, Greg. Right. So your message today, as we wrap this up, is think before you comment on someone's appearance. Definitely. And Curate, people. curate, exactly. That's it. Curate <laughs> follows. And well done to you. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, Greg, for having uh, me. It's lovely to have you in. And what um, you are a personal trainer, where are you based? I'm based in Letterkenny in okay. Euphoria Fitness, uh, just outside the NCT Centre. And you can get me on my Instagram, Rita are you Canning. Tough? Do you shout things like, come on, do it? You well, can do I can't, I can't. You can be one of my clients now, Greg, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, man. Put you on. <laughs> I'll have to stop the pizza first. Listen, thank you very much indeed, Breda. Thanks very much, Greg, for having me. In. Okay, that's Breda Canning there um, with a, a very positive message and one really that, you know, it's good for younger people to hear as well. I know there's not necessarily uh, a ton of 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds listening, uh, but certainly wise words um, that they could uh, adhere to.